Hello everyone and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. This is Jacob Ames, Senior Applications Engineer. And in today's video, we'll be covering the basics of the knit command, which is exceptionally important for anybody using surfacing techniques within SOLIDWORKS. The knit command is responsible for stitching separate surface bodies together to form one continuous surface body, which is required for many downstream commands like adding fillets or turning surfaces into solid bodies. Here we have a surface model representing the outer shell of what will eventually be a solid handle for a gear shifter. Right now, however, this model is made up of 12 individual surface bodies, and we can see this by looking at the surface bodies folder in the design tree and the number next to it. Additionally, the blue edges in the model, also known as open edges, give away the fact that this is a surface model. Open edges only bound one geometric face and aren't possible in a solid, and that's actually what the knit command is designed for taking the surface bodies with blue edges or open edges and sewing them together to form a continuous surface and ultimately a solid. If I try to look at mass properties right now, you'll see that it's grayed out because I don't have any solids in the document and commands like shell and combine that require solids to function aren't available either. While face fillets can still be used on disjoint surface models like this one, Regular edge fillets will not be available and will instead give you this pop-up error that says laminar edges cannot be filleted, so watch out for that. Now this video assumes that you've already trimmed the surface bodies to meet nicely edge to edge, which is required to use knit. You can't have any overlap at the edges. If you're not familiar with the trim surface tool yet, be sure to check out our tutorial on it, which we've linked in the description below for you. When you're ready, access the Surfaces tab of the Command Manager choose Knit Surface, and then select the surface bodies you'd like to stitch together. If you want to knit all your surface bodies in the model, Control a can be really helpful here as well. It's also worth noting that Knit can be used on the faces of solid bodies, so if you're trying to extract a surface body off of an existing solid to use as an end condition or a reference surface, for example, this can be a great tool for that as well. Now one of the most common issues you'll likely run into with the knit command is feature failure due to gaps between your surfaces. These gaps can be introduced in a number of ways from sketching errors to approximations made by the system when calculating surfaces, but in any case if the gaps are too large SOLIDWORKS won't be able to handle them and you'll get a rebuild error like this one. When this happens you can get a better understanding of the gaps between your surface bodies by selecting the checkbox for gap control. If you don't see any gaps listed here, but your knit is still failing, it's possible that the gaps are outside of the displayed size range. Adjust the handles on the left and right in this section as needed to show gaps of different sizes. If you max these sliders out and nothing appears, but your knit is still failing, you may have some larger gaps that you're missing, and you'll need to go inspect your model before moving forward. Now you can see I have four gaps in my model, and clicking on the results show me where these gaps exist. Here you can actually see the gap between my surfaces. Unfortunately, at an eighth millimeter each, the system can't automatically patch these gaps, even if I turn the knitting tolerance up to a maximum of one-tenth of a millimeter, because my gap size of an eighth millimeter is larger than that maximum tolerance. So let's make a quick adjustment. I'll use a move copy body command on the two surfaces at the bottom to narrow this gap, and then we'll return to the knit command to see if that helps. You can now see that the icons for the gaps have changed, and checkboxes are now available. So long as each of these checkboxes is turned on, and my knitting tolerance value is higher than the size of these gaps, I should be able to complete the knit. And just like that, I've turned our original 12 surface bodies into one single combined surface body. Interestingly enough though, if we go back and edit the knit feature, I can also turn gap control off and so long as I don't have any gaps too large for the feature to handle, it'll still work. Gap control is mostly used to troubleshoot any gaps that are causing the feature to fail originally or to decide which gaps actually get sewn up by selecting or deselecting the boxes, and it doesn't have to be on just because there are gaps between your surfaces. So you may consider doing just what we did here. Start by trying to knit without gap control, then investigate gap control to see where the large gaps are if the knit fails. All right, now the two remaining checkboxes here are pretty simple. If you have surface bodies that meet with tangency, using the Merge Entities checkbox will eliminate the edge between them and merge the faces together. 
you can see that behavior here on the bottom where the planar face turns from two faces into one. And then finally, if your surface bodies form a watertight volume with no gaps, you can use the create solid checkbox to automatically create a solid. Keep in mind, this means that you can't have any large gaps or missing surfaces though, so this checkbox may not always be available. And you can always use a command like thicken down the road if you're unable to use create solid here. You won't notice a big difference visually when using create solid because the result of the knit command closes up all the edges even if you leave it as a surface body. So to verify, you can take a look at the solid bodies folder in the feature manager design tree if you have it showing. Or if not, you can always take a quick section view to look inside the model and see that it is in fact solid inside. Now, one last cool trick before we go. Earlier I mentioned that you can use the knit command to create surface models from the faces of existing solid bodies, which can be really helpful for setting up reference surfaces and many other applications. Now that I have a solid body, let's see what knit can do. I'll simply select a handful of faces. Just keep in mind they do need to be touching each other. And just like that, I have a surface body made up of those faces. It really doesn't get much easier than that, unless you'd like to use seed faces. This last piece is really geared more toward mold design and manufacturing where you often have many, many faces on a model. And it requires you to first create a radiated surface at the top or bottom of your design. Radiated surfaces just require you to select a direction reference and then edges from which the surface will be radiated. Then once complete, start the knit command again and then select the newly created radiated surface. When selecting a radiated surface, you'll see a new box appear, and this is where you can select a seed face, which must be the face of a solid body. Now this will automatically propagate the selection to all the other faces of the solid when I confirm the feature, and in just a few seconds, I've basically reversed the process and created an entire surface model of the outside faces of the solid, which can often be rather difficult to do, when many faces are involved. Do keep in mind though, the face enclosed by the radiated surface here at the bottom will not be included, so you may need to do a bit of rework here if necessary. All right, that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to leave it a like and tell us about your experience using the knit command in the comments. We're always looking for new and creative video ideas, so if you have any tools or features you'd like to see covered in a future video, let us know. And consider subscribing to the channel for more SOLIDWORKS tech tips like this one every week. Finally, if you're looking for professional and structure-led SOLIDWORKS training on topics like this one, head on over to hawkridgesys.com and check out our training catalog to take a look at all the SOLIDWORKS classes we have to offer. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.